Oh, okay. So hi guys, uh, we got um, we got ourselves another interview today. Um, so uh, I'm happy to close out the day with uh, my my third and final guest for today. Um, and as tradition for tradition, I like to let the in, I like to let the guests introduce themselves. So uh, why don't you? Yeah, why don't you go for it? Just introduce yourself for a bit. <laughs> I don't know how to do it, so um, I'm just Desdemona. Um, I'm Caribbean, I'm Jamaican and Belizean. I grew up um, between the both of the countries. Um, and I don't know. <laughs> I guess you'll get to know me with your question. So, so yeah, well, that's great. So obviously, you know, this is the first time that we are talking. Um, so, and, and so, yeah, that, there was a lot of really interesting uh, subject points. Like, for instance, I didn't know that you were not from, not from the U.S., but you were from, you know, where you say you're from. Um, can you, you might be the first Caribbean person that I've, that I've talked to. Um, really? So, and I've done like almost 50, I've, I've done like almost 50 interviews. That's a lot of interviews. Ah. So you were the first. So, so, so the pressure's on, the pressure's on. I got to yeah. do well. So, but but okay. for those of them who don't don't know too much or really hardly anything about the Caribbean, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and um, you know where you come from, your home and stuff, and sort of how it's different from here, the U.S. Um, how to explain? I mean, I hope everyone knows what the Caribbean is. Um, most people, you know, refer to like Rihanna, but you know she's from Barbados, which is something totally different than what I am. Um, but um, we're basically, um, all of the islands collected together are African descendants mixed with whatever you were colonized with, unfortunately. So you have um, a different blend. We kind of, you know, all speak different languages, although we may be right next to each other. We speak, you know, a different language just based upon where, you know, again, you're colonized from and where your people come from. Um, the islands, every, everyone wants to go to the islands. That's where everyone wants to go, where you have the, the white sand, the clear water, um, it's different because um, we're more, um, I guess, um, we're more free. I guess, I guess that's the best way like to, to explain it. We're not um, held back by a lot of things. You know, we, we, we have a thicker skin. I think that that's like the best way to say it. You know, we're not, we're not easily offended. We're like using the life of the party. Um, we're not afraid to try anything new. Um, we know how to cook very well and we all know how to dance. And we, we, we walk and move as if we have our own band following us. Like if you ever watch the old movies like um, Shaft where he has the band, his, his, his band walking behind him. That's kind of like how we are as a regular basis. You know, you could see us and we could be you know, upset and all of a sudden we'll turn on music and it's kind of music is like our heartbeats, our soundtrack, you know. Um, most people who associate um, like Jamaica with us, mainly we think of Bob Marley and I'm from Kingston. Um, so we'll see, but um, also like we have Usain Bolt, we have all the track runners, of course, big up to them because we want everything. Um, and then Belize, most people don't really think of Belize, which is where my mom is from. Um, and Belize is um, mainly for divers, like we're known for our water and our fish and everything like that. Or also next to a lot of um, Latin American cultures, uh, countries. But what people don't realize is that Belizean people, we, are consider we do consider ourselves black versus although we are, you know, close to Ecuador and et cetera, et cetera, a lot of Latin American cultures, we do consider ourselves black and we speak a form of Creole that's not like the kind in um, New Orleans. It used to be different. And then, of course, in Jamaica, we speak Patois. Um, and then, of course, you know, we are um, under the British rule as far as schooling and stuff. So we kind of have a bit of that in us too. But um, it's when you meet someone from the Caribbean, you'll never forget. We're very welcoming. Um, we're very uh, giving. We're very compassionate. But we're very, um, the way that we, we reward, we also... Um, we also punish the same way. So like if we do us wrong, we're very, very like in your face, very, you know, aggressive. And it could be just for three minutes. We go from zero to a thousand and then we're back to laughing again. But, you know, we love and we, you know, we're, we're like, we're good people. We're good people. We're just, we're just a bit different. And it's just a based upon, I think, um, how we're raised, you know, in general and through the islands, you know, you, you go outside with no shoes on, you know, you 
you find things to do, you know, you eat, you know, you eat things that you pick up, you know, so it's a bit different. That's very interesting. Yeah, I don't know anything about the Caribbean. I mean, I know who Rihanna is. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like I mean, you know, just like in general, cause I grew up in, you know, uh, LA, California. So, mm-hmm. you know, we like as diverse as it is, I don't think I've ever met, uh, you know, anybody. Uh, really? Anybody from there, no. I mean, here's the thing. No, here's the thing, though. So I want to get your opinion and ask you some questions because I've been wondering this for like five years. Um, so about five <laughs> years ago, I started talking to this girl. Um, she lives out of state. She lives like, I don't know. Anyway, so, uh, but she is from Trinidad and Tobago. And, mm-hmm. and when- I Yeah, you know, her, you know, that's um, what Nicki Minaj is. She's Trinidadian. Yeah. And she, mm-hmm. she, she made the, she, she made a clarification right away that it wasn't, she wasn't from the same area that Rihanna was from um because mm-hmm. because that, that that's that's what i that was like one of my first questions i was like oh cool mm-hmm. so you're from the same place to be honest it's like no like Nicki Minaj yeah and so um but she also raised this point too and she told me that she didn't consider herself to be black basically yes it's a <laughs> of course you asked me that question it's it's a um it's a slippery slope but it's a, um, I, and I, I'm gonna really kind of, um, I hope this doesn't turn it dark or anything, or I'm gonna really be blunt. It's, a, um, it's really a gap or divide in between uh, the black culture or the African culture or whatever you wanna, cause Africans don't consider themselves the same as African-Americans. And so Caribbean people, we do say that, no, 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 we're not. And I, you know, I grew up with that, you know, um, being um, unfortunately racially labeled as a Yankee, because when I when I left from Jamaica and I went to Belize and I come to the states, so when I go back, they're like, "Oh, you're not really one of us. You're you're a Yankee." A Yankee is um, another racial slur, like calling someone who's Hispanic a gringo. It's it's like you're not authentic. You're not really us. You know, you're you're us, but you're not us. You don't you don't live how we live. Um, so it's like a, it's like you're kind of penalized because your parents take you somewhere to get something better. But it is something that we as a Caribbean culture, um, we divide ourselves and the Africans divide ourselves. But I, I'm going to speak personally, like, I think that the way that I've, when I hear people talk or I've experienced, I think the way that they view African-Americans are, are that they are weak. And it's not the case because to be in bondage or to survive all these systematic issues for so long, it takes a strong person to do that. And, you know, like, especially like in Jamaica or Haiti, we have a little bit of an air about ourselves because we freed ourselves. So we're like, no, we're fighters. We, you know, we, we freed ourselves, but that's also why no one ever comes to our rescue when something terrible happens. Like, you know, the earthquake over in, in Haiti, remember the one before that, they're still, they're still recuperating from that one. And now you have this one and they probably won't get any help anyways, you know, again for this one. Same with Jamaica, whenever a natural disaster happens in the Caribbean, you, very, you hear very little about any other country coming to help. Like I take it back, was it, uh, um, I think it was maybe the president of Dubai or something like that, he ended up helping Haiti the first earthquake he sent over his own personal plane. When that became public news, then America wanted to send over something. You know, then, oh, then everyone else wanted, but they kind of, I think they still kind of hold a little bit of a grudge because we freed ourselves. And then it took them some time to trick us back into what now we're in is what, what I like to call financial slavery, which means you freed yourself physically, you're no longer in bondage. But what we did after we freed ourselves is no one really had a way to sustain the, the money flow to feed ourselves. And so in turn, we ended up having to sell the island, pieces of the island back, back until we were totally back into financial slavery or like, you know, like anything in America, you know, you buy a house, you keep taking loans out on there, whatever. Then now you, you're totally ass upside down. What, the, what do you guys call it upside down? So it's like that. And then we ended up being basically financially enslaved. And then we ended up getting like pennies upon the dollar for our stuff and for our work. You know, and so we we have this little bit of air about ourselves, just like the Africans do. They feel like that they're pure and they're, you know, they were stronger. They're not the weakest. And then they treat us actually better because we were the fighters. We we were the, the you know, we were the ones who fought 
and then among freed ourselves. So we, you know, they have this air that we're different than those Americans who are just fat. You know, people think fat and lazy and, you know, you sit there and you allow yourself to be enslaved and you guys didn't do this. So you, everyone has the answer until you're in that situation. You know, everyone speaks, well, you should have did this or you should have did that. Well, you don't know. You're not put in that situation until you know. You know, and so I try not to, you know, look at it that way, but I was raised the same, you know, that, you know, we're not the same as them. You're not them. Or, you know, when you go to school, if you're like, well, the other, the other black kids are doing, you're not them. You're like, I think we're the same color. I'm not really sure. I mean, we're not the same. Well, what are you? You know, it's like, so you, you don't understand it. And it's a, it's a generational thing that everyone, you know, it's like um, when you get the black people that kind of hate being black and they want to be everything else but black. They want to have Indian in their family. They want to be half Hispanic, have anything else but full black, you know? And then you have the ones that are like, no, I'm black and you're not, you don't fit my, my blackness because you don't do this, that, and the third. So that's why it's a difference um, between us, but we are also raised very, very different and we have different mores. And that's kind of almost like um, the thing that I admire about in Asian culture, we have a lot of similarities as far as like being raised versus that a lot of American cultures don't have it anymore or it was systematically broken up and they never repaired it. So, okay, yeah, well, that's very good. And I'm sure a lot of, you know, my viewers will, you know, love hearing this because I, I don't know, you know, where exactly everyone's from who's watching, but uh, like I said, this is, this is the first time that I've knowingly talked to somebody from, from you know, from the Caribbean. Um, so, so yeah, that, I mean, thank you for clarifying that. And like I said, that's always mm -hmm. sort of been on my mind because like I said, you know, you know, obviously everyone knows that, you know, that is where Nicki Minaj is from and Nicki Minaj is considered practically by everybody to be a black woman. You know I mean? She, she, she considers mm -hmm. herself to be a black woman. So she picks and chooses because it's a couple of oh, okay. times that you'll hear her and she'll post and I'm, I love my Trinidadian people and then she'll speak and, you know, in, in the Caribbean language or there, you know, and, and she'll, she'll go back and forth, you know, when she wants to be versus like Rihanna's all day long. Mm. But also Nikki was born in New York, you know, her oh, parents yeah. are from there. So, you know, but she's holding on to that root and that's perfect because that's, that's, that's your people. You know, but like I said, she picks and chooses because it's been several times that she talks about, you know, I'm trying to die, I'm this, I'm that, you know, and then you're like, yeah, but you didn't say that the other day, but okay. You know, like, you're like, you go, you got to peek, you know, and it's just the same, you know, it's the same with Beyonce. She, she's Creole one minute and then she's, you know, which is the same, like everyone wants to put label it, but you know, you are some form of an African descendant. Let's just put it that way, you know, instead of like breaking it up because further perpetuating, perpetuating the, the, the system that has been put in place for years ago that we're individuals and we're actually, we may come from different tribes and different parts of the continent, which is Africa, but we're, 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 we're from the same land, we're from the same place. So we have something that's similar and per science, we all came from the same laity. So at some point we're related somewhere. So, okay, so I get that, you know, each, each, each place, you know, is, is different, right? And there's this, you know, it's very complex and, and like cultural identity is sort of kind of like all over the place, but by times it's not. Um, yeah. So just, I'll just straight up ask you, and, and I know that you, you already spent, you answered this question at length, but I guess just sort of just the, um, just for me, um, <laughs> and for everyone okay. watching. So basically, is this person Black? Is is right? I mean, because like I said, well, that's that's that, for some reason I'm not even black, and that sort of that got to me for saying that you know, oh, I don't identify as you know, straight up black, whatever. Like, well, everyone's first of all, no one's black. We're all shades of some variation of brown. right. No, I'm sorry, no. What I meant, but sorry, let me let, let me. We are this. all African descendants, absolutely. Right, and I'm sorry. I should I should have phrased that differently. Basically, I was it's just okay. trying to—I was just trying to figure out. You know, I, mean, I was just trying to figure out because, like I said, this—I'm—I'm. I'm, all the things you're telling me, this is the first time that I'm hearing about all, a lot of it. So, oh, wow. yeah, I'm—I'm kind of—I'm kind of ignorant to, to all that. So that's what I was asking. But, uh, but no, I, I didn't. Okay, mean, you don't—you don't learn unless you ask. No, right, things. exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, well, yeah, it's interesting, and I'm sorry. I know I'm gonna—I'm gonna move past this point in a bit. But so basically, okay. Nicki Minaj, I've heard this before, where celebrities sort of—they—they're black when it's convenient for them to be. Basically, yes. they use it as like a marketing tool. It's like a PR tool. Yeah, like so you'll see um Nicki Minaj turn real like um Trinidadian 
when a carnival shows up or when like Trinidadian um, Independence Day comes up, when West Indy uh, Independence Day month, which unfortunately they took it. And I think it's just another way for the government to try to separate people. They made um, the West Indy Independence Day month, which is normally June, they turned it into Gay Pride Month. And I was like, that's just to start conflict within two different cultures. Because I said, you totally disregarded the, 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 West Indy, the West Indy month that has been going on for forever, where every, every country, you know, when they free themselves, they celebrate. And we have what's called carnival, you know, and um, you take it and you give it to another, another group. And I'm like, you did that on purpose. It's like, you might as well have, you, I mean, basically you're giving them to West Indian month is one step down from you giving them Black History Month. You know, you did it on purpose to kind of start conflicts because you could have given them any month to celebrate their individuality or anything else because there's nothing wrong with celebrating who you are. But if you know that some culture is already in there, you just want to perpetuate more drama and more separation because we have many people of color that, you know, identify as any of the, you know, as any of the other genders or et cetera. And it doesn't say that we don't love them or we don't want to celebrate with them or we don't want to party with them. But it's like, you know, we also worked hard to free ourselves, you know, and we deserve to have that month just for our celebration, for our ancestors, for people who paved the way, et cetera. And then we can also celebrate them as well. There's nothing wrong with that. But for you to combine it with a month that's already existing, it literally, all you saw was the rainbow flag everywhere. And then nothing about, you know, any carnival, nothing about, you know, West, you know, any, any West, any independence or nothing like that. And I was like, they just did it on purpose to cause conflict. And luckily it seems to not, you know, have had many, I mean, I've heard people, you know, gripe about it and were like, well, we still, you know, respect this or that and third. And I was like, well, really, they don't have a choice. Like they didn't pick that month. They gave it to them, you know, but it, um, like I was saying, I'm, I'm so sorry. I kind of got a little bit lost about it. What was the question? I do, I do, I do, I do. No, I was, I, I was literally just, just trying to figure out if this person <laughs> is lying about her own cultural identity or not. Because no, like, like I said, she picks the holidays. You know, she usually comes around around the holidays, and you'll see her in her in her costumes. Um, where she's like Rihanna, it's it's all day long. You know, um, we have like a lot of um, different you know cultures, and sometimes they come out and they represent like um. You have uh, the singer uh, Jadina, and it, he represents like Nigeria, but they, Nigeria is like, no, he's not us. And I'm like, oh Lord, okay, like, <laughs> like you had to get approval. Because I was like, I thought your dad was from there, and it is, and it's like they don't want them. It's a lot of different back and forth where people come and they represent one spot, and then they they represent that culture, but they don't do anything for it, you know. So I have yet to hear like much about you know other than she's gone to a few carnivals and stuff like that, you know, where she's like rebuilt schools or done anything like. As far as like how Rihanna has has done, um, I haven't heard um, much about a lot of celebrities who sometimes claim other ethnicities. Like um, French Montana is, you know, Moroccan. He, you know, he shot one video out there, and then they were saying the people from there were posting like he hasn't done anything here. You know, it's just a poster board for publicity. You know, so it's a lot of people that are from that or have parents from that or have lineage of that, but don't technically give back. So for me, I hate to put it this way, but it's like, don't claim us when it's convenient. You know, don't, yeah. don't claim us when it's cute. Yeah. You know, be a part when we're raggedy, be a part of us when we're, when we're good, be a part of us when we're terrible, be a part of us at, not at all theaters, you know? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I think that's really interesting, you know, cultural identity and especially, you know, being a public figure, like all these, you know what I mean, singers and artists and rappers. I mean, like you just said, the most obvious thing, you know, French Montana is not black, he's Arab, and, or he's, mm -hmm. you know, from, um, I forget what you say, uh, Morocco. Morocco. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's funny, like, I mean, if you listen to that guy, I'm not like the biggest French Montana fan, but I have heard a lot of yeah. his songs. Yeah. He pretty much says the N-word like, constantly, mm -hmm. he's culturally appropriating this and that. Yeah. And I think at one point he even made, like a, he made a statement that kind of bit him in the ass. Is like he he said something made some kind of ignorant remark about black women wearing weaves and stuff like that, um, and everybody went after him for it. And uh, and that's I mean, typical, yeah. you know. Everybody loves all the good things about black people till they're no longer good in your mind. You know, I remember getting teased about my lips being big. I used to get teased about like my bum being big. I used to get teased about all these things, and then now you're paying for it. I'm like, well, wait a minute. When did this become cool? 
Like, like, wait a minute, I used to get talked about, you know, about this. You know, I, I remember on the flip side, you know, because my nose isn't big, you know, as far as other black, like, you have like white people speeches. I'm like, well, who said that was white? Like, what, what made that white, you know? And it's, it's, you know, everything, people pick apart everything that you are. And when it's cool to be that, then you're fine. Then when they decide it's not okay, or it's no longer in, then it's a problem. You know, and I'm sure Prince Montana dated plenty of women with weaves. Plenty of, you dated a Kardashian. Everything that she got is, is fake and bought. So let alone her extensions, every other thing else was. So you can't, you know, it was it was okay. It was okay then. So now it's not okay because of what? You know, like don't for me, be even across the board. If I don't like certain people, I don't care if you're, you know, brown, yellow, white, whatever. If I don't like them, I'm gonna not like it across the board, not just picking and choosing who I want to talk at the time because it doesn't fit me or you've offended me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I really, I, I will move on from this part because I know there's, there's a couple of questions and I don't want to keep going forever, but um, I do want to say one last thing about this is that it's interesting because, you know, obviously I'm Asian American, of Chinese descent, my parents are from China, or one of them is, and um, the other one's from here, but like it's kind of funny as an Asian American, like there is a lot of um, self-hatred and a lot of, uh, I want to say, quote unquote, you know, chasing after whiteness or whatever uh, in our cultures. I'm sure, like, for, with us, it's, it's not exactly a secret. We don't hide it. <laughs> so, um, but the thing about that is, like, I was thinking about this movie. I don't know if you've heard of it. So it's called Crazy Rich Asians. And it yeah. came out, few, yeah. The Rich yeah. Asians in Singapore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a big movie. Mm -hmm. And it came out a few years ago. And it was interesting because I'm familiar with all of the actors and actresses in that movie. And all mm -hmm. the all the Asian because they're all all the Asian actresses, all the actresses in the movie are either dating or married to white men. And here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. At the movie's premiere, at the at the premiere of Crazy Rich Asians, um, none of them brought their their significant others with them. Period. Of course not. Of and then here's not. the thing, right? Exactly. And and but all the men. I mean, all the men that, you know, they're all married to are dating Asian women and they brought their dates and they brought their wives, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. but it's kind of funny. It's like, it, it's really, it's very noticeable. If you, if you know mm -hmm. what I know, it's very noticeable and you can put things together. It's like, that's bad PR. And then, you know what? Sorry. And uh, one more thing. There, there's, a, there's another movie called Shang-Chi, which I'm sure you, you, you might've heard of. It's a big Marvel movie. It's a lot of Kung Fu and shit. Yes. It's coming out in a couple mm -hmm. weekends or a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. The movie premiere was a few days ago. They did the same shit. The same exact yeah, shit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's about painting the it's about painting a picture of the persona. And they're always thinking when they do this, they're trying to right now, and I don't want to sound like a, like a like, I don't know if that's gonna make it sound like a dick, but let's be true. Right now it's like an Asian focus. Hey, we got these kung fu movies, everyone's Asian in something, we're throwing an Asian. Before I couldn't even see an Asian person in the commercial. Now, every time I turn on a commercial, it's an Asian and a white person or Asian and a light-skinned black person. It's somebody Asian in some way. And I'm like, okay, well, what is this? Like, is this a shift now? You're, you're, you're picking to choose? Because I remember when they started putting my black people in commercials and they literally protest because one time they put one on the Cheerios commercial. It was a white guy and the black and the black woman and they got the little mixed baby. They literally had a whole fit about that one. But it's like now... They've moved on to this wave where now they're doing a lot of Asian stuff, but they're they're trying to, it's almost like they're trying to say, hey, Asian culture, we support you. So if you have a significant other that's not Asian, we're like pro-Asian right now. So don't bring them because they're not going to make it look bad because you're going you're gonna to turn off people. You're going to turn off the Asian culture because they're going to be like, well, you don't like us or you don't date us. So, you know, and that's what it does because when you see your favorite actor or actress you want, the masses to be able to dream about them not being attached to anybody. So if I come alone, say if, say if I'm an actress and I come alone, everyone's attracted to me, it's more appealing if I come without my mate or if I'm like say an extra in Wakanda and I come, I can't come with a white guy to Wakanda. No, they're like, no, no, no. <laughs> but I'd have to go and either bring someone black or come by myself. And that's just how the world is like, um, for instance, one of Beyonce's dancers in, um, what's that, what's that Freedom song? It's like two or three of them were dating white guys. And they literally made like a big deal about it because they danced in what her Freedom song was, you know? 
And they're like, oh, they're all pro-black, but they're dating white people. I'm just like, well, maybe none of the black people were treating them well. They're like, I don't know. Everyone has their own pick of preference, but it doesn't mean that you don't stand for whatever you stand for, you know? And I think that that's just exactly what they're trying to paint is like this pro-Asian thing. And, you know, they're so, so super supportive or this is Asian way that they're going for. And that's why you don't see them bring the significant others that are white or whatever. You might see them later on down the line. They happen to get married or, you know, have a kid and pop up then you're like, I don't know he was dating white women. You know, you sit there like, huh? But they'll do that. And it, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy that everyone has been brainwashed to the point that they think that being something other than yourself is best. And that's really sad because Asian, you should be, you should be happy that you, who you are, you guys have such a rich culture. Um, you guys are very smart, very talented. Um, you have, you know, just, just, just based upon your own um, stock as who you are, as far as a race, you shouldn't want to be anyone else. And the same for, for black people, say for anyone, like everyone has their own stock that they're built up with. You should be happy and that should be plenty for that versus you wanting to be someone else that you're not. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, personally, I have my own thoughts on, um, you know, how sort of, because to me personally, I feel like Asian Asians are the only race of, of people that is divided by gender, but I have been told by quite a few black women that that's not the case. Um, no. So, I mean, we might have our problems, but I guess it's not perfect, you know, anywhere. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you know, yeah, I, 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 I totally do get it. And believe me, I can go on forever about that, but I don't want to go off on a <laughs> negative tangent. This is your interview. I know, so, right? <laughs> so I do want to get to know you. So I have a few more questions and then we'll wrap it up. Absolutely. Um, so, so yeah, so I know we've talked. Is my so, lighting going away? Are you okay? Sir? No, 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 you're fine. You're fine. Okay. Yeah. So I just want to talk to you. So like I said before, I see you post a lot in the Facebook groups. And, and particularly funny. in the AMBW Facebook groups. Um, so am I correct in assuming that you might have an interest in dating outside your race, particularly when it comes to Asian men? I am I am just like, do you remember the group called The Tribe Called Quest? Do you remember them? I remember that song they had, and it was like, I like I'm brown, yellow, Puerto. I, it doesn't matter what you are, as long as you treat me well. Now, am I, at this juncture in my life, had a specific focus on certain people that I, I feel like that we mesh better with? Absolutely. And yes, I do post in that group, but I'm going to be honest. You guys, sometimes it's so boring. And then you're so, like, they're so dramatic. Like, I feel like it's more of a Black women group than the Asian. The, they, they, I, I don't know if they suppress the Asian men by just the, the stuff that they say or what's happening. But I'm like, I don't know, just post up some like we say fuckery and I'm just gonna post it up and just like hopefully everyone's laughing having a good time or you know we could change the dynamics because it, it's it's like it's kind of boring you know and then like, most of the men of course don't don't speak which I'm kind of used to that because I'm, I'm well I'm well traveled so like I've actually you know been to the country and it's kind of like you know unless you're out drinking or something then they're more social but like you know up front face to face it's kind of you know they'll stare and almost feel like they're creepy you're like you looked at me for like 20 minutes you ain't said nothing guess I gotta come over here and talk to you you know <laughs> you're a little bet and then you find out like I, I've, I've liked you for the last two weeks that you've been coming here well what why you didn't say nothing you know and it's there that you know that you guys are I don't know about you specifically but the ones I've met have been very shy and I'm like you know you you miss you know, you miss your opportunity by not taking a chance. I said, what, I said, what has no ever hurt anybody? Not a hurt nobody, you know? So it, yeah, I do post in a group and yes, at this time I am um, attracted to or interested in pursuing a, a relationship with an Asian man, of course. <laughs> I yeah, got this, you will, I will, you will always get the seal of approval from me. <laughs> okay. but, um, yeah, actually on that note, the light is getting a little bit dark. Is okay. there? Give me one moment. I'm gonna okay. see if I can turn this light on. Let's see if it's okay. This one? Who touched the lights on? Give me one quick second. Okay. All right. Okay, it's better. Back to the regular schedule program. 
Oh uh, yeah, it's a lot better. Okay, that's yeah, very good. All right. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I'm not shy, and it's actually I, I've heard you say you're you're like the probably like the twentieth person I've talked to that has said Asian men are shy and don't say anything. Um, I just I like I said I have mixed feelings on that topic because I know for a fact that yeah, Asian, a lot of Asian guys are shy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also know that there's a lot of negative stereotypes about Asian men. And that's just mm-hmm. that's just one of them, but unfortunately, that's not so much a stereotype as it is true because it is true. I don't think not it's a stereotype. A, yeah, I don't think it's a stereotype, and I think it's negative. You know, it's a, it's a lot of them. Um, I think majority is um, like um, like one guy I talked to, he was like um, that he said we just look, we have. <laughs> it was funny, but it's probably true, right? He said we just had a look about ourselves that. Um, looked like we were mean and I was like what do you mean you know he said sometimes you know like like when I see black women I, I want to talk to them they just look like they're mean so I don't you know I don't talk to them and so I mean I said maybe she had a bad day I said or then again I said some of us have resting bitch face and it's just that's what it looks like but they're not me you know like you're more than welcome to come and speak you know so it sometimes it just takes a hello and then it starts a whole conversation you know and I said and it, you know I mean it, even even or even insinuate that you do want to you know um talk I said and then you know maybe they they speak you know I said you just you can't you know I guess just assume so like like I mean like, like they have said like you know like it was a one guy in this group and he was like you know we don't talk because you guys fetishize over um actors and famous people and I was like hmm I said, okay, well, that makes sense. I said, because that's all they do talk about. I was like, but, you know, you being quiet, I said, you can miss out on somebody who, you know, likes you. Like, and there was another black girl in there, like, I like the guy, but I'm kind of shy to say something. And I was like, well, who is he? I was like, I, I don't know if you've seen that post, but I told her, I said, who is he? I said, tell me who he is. I'm going to hook this up. I said, this is ridiculous that you like someone and you're sitting here shy. And instead of saying something, you don't know if he likes you or you don't know. I said, it's not, it's not going to hurt you to, to, to say something. He said, no, he said, no. You know, it is what it is. You're not for everybody. You're not meant to be. But you'll never know if that person's for you and they should try something. So, I mean, I just have a lot of Asian guys that are that like, you know, um, that may even give me a compliment. But then, you know, like they won't say, hey, you want to, you know, you want to go out? Like, they're like, you're really pretty. You're like, oh, thanks. You know, and I'm like, oh, what do you like? To, you know, I have to almost like force me, like, what do you like to eat? You want to go have some food? And then they're like, they're ready to go. And then they're like, if I hadn't said nothing, you wouldn't have said nothing. You know, and it's like, and, and I mean, it's, it's a lot of girls. Um, and if you go in the group, it's a few Caribbean girls. We stick together. It's um, one from St. Lucius and it's the one from St. Kitts, I think, or something like that. Um, and it's another one, if I'm not mistaken. And um, like the same thing, like they walked up to like, you know, they're, they're married, they walked up to their husbands, you know, and that's how they ended up, you know, going out. So it's, um, it, it is like, they're, they're kind of a bit shy. And I think that sometimes our aggressiveness or our um, maybe like abrasive ways to certain situations may turn them off. Yeah, I mean, um... You know, uh, I know, no, not everyone's the same. and You can't really generalize. But I do think, uh, like I said, I have mixed feelings on this topic. I do feel like, um, I guess, out of all the, the groups of people, you know, Asian, especially Asian men in particular, are more passive aggressive when it mm-hmm. comes to a lot of things like, like, like social, you know, like, like social behavioral stuff, you know what I mean? Like, just like I said, like approaching women, you know what I mean? Like stepping outside the comfort zone. I know a lot mm-hmm. based on my own experiences and, you know, the friends that I've had, and, you know, even some family, not really family members, not family's different, but mostly just other Asians that I've met, a lot of them mm-hmm. do fit a lot of these stereotypes and that doesn't make them bad people at all. They're mm-hmm. actually, you know, no. but, but the thing about that is that I feel like when it comes to when you compare it to other groups of people like white people black people hispanics even native American, whatever mm-hmm. you know what i mean that aren't asian like they're more mm-hmm. you know they they're more kind of like they're not as passive aggressive when it comes to a lot of things like conforming to you know uh stereotypes mm-hmm. right or cliches yeah. or anything like that i feel like mm-hmm. Especially, you know, black people and Hispanic people, where there are a lot of negative stereotypes. You know, you know, I've met a lot of black people and Hispanic people who, you know, are not like that at all, 
or are trying to mm-hmm. prove those stereotypes wrong. Or you meant something that they're just like. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. No, I mean, like I said, you know, everyone's different. But when it comes to Asian people, I feel like, like I said, they're the most passive aggressive because they honestly don't really care. They, I think a lot of them are aware of all the stereotypes about them. But I feel like a lot of them just don't really care. And I feel like that's part of the culture. Because for me, here, see, here's where I have mixed, I have a lot of beef with Asian, not Asian people, but just Asian culture. Asian culture mm-hmm. in general, if you come from an Asian family and you're an Asian male, you're kind of screwed. Because Asian families do not teach you how to behave in, in certain social settings, like trying mm-hmm. to, you know, get a woman or get a girlfriend or, you know, anything like mm-hmm. that. And they, they tell you to get a wife and tell you to, 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 to do good in school, go to good university, get a good job, get married, have kids, all that shit. But they don't really tell you mm-hmm. how to do it. They don't really have those deep, meaningful conversations. And I feel you like- You don't get emotionally taught how to emotionally handle or interact like that? No. That and, yeah, and that's why a lot of people, a lot of Asian guys just are clueless. And for me personally, I feel like that's, that's kind of a reason why a lot of these Asian guys, whether in the groups, like a lot of them just kind of clueless at how to really talk to women. Mm-hmm. Because clearly no one taught them how to do it. And you know- I'm not- I, I would absolutely agree. I definitely, I have one, um, one guy try to talk to me and we literally like, we're just talking about sports and like having a great time, funny conversation. And he was like, what's your email? And I was like, he's like, just, it could be a throwaway email. Just, just anything. What's your email? And so I was like, okay. So I gave him my email. And so then he was like, check it in a few minutes. And I was like, why? And so he was like, I sent you something. And I was like, well, why would you do that? And he's like, I just wanted to, like, he couldn't, instead of like, being normal i think is his his he created his love language as, as money so like the first thing off the bat before you could ask me to go out you sent me something then after the fact if you're sending me and it was a funny thing because he he kept asking like weird questions like here and there and i was like well what is what, is, what does that have to do with anything and so i just answered the question and we would keep going and then eventually he sent me this card to uh, nordstrom's and he said, I was trying to figure out, I guess, or for you to tell me what your favorite perfume was, but you wouldn't tell me. He said, so I knew kind of how much to send you. He said, but I sent you one. If it's not enough, tell me. And I was like, well, take it back. I was like, why would you send that to me? You know, I said, I'd rather like, we can go out to eat or hang out. He was like, well, I want to do that too. He's like, but I just wanted to get you something. And then I said, okay. So I was like, well, I appreciate it, but I don't need it. Like you should probably cancel it or whatever the case may be, you know. I was like, I'm not for sale and I'm not gonna say that you're trying to buy me, so don't be offended. I said, but that's not gonna make me like you more or anything else, cause you buy me too. And so then of course, apparently was talking to myself cause we go out and then he's like, he takes me to this little boutique. And I was like, oh, you know, we're just walking after we go eat, we're walking. And I was like, oh, that's really cute. Let's go look in here and let's see. So I'm walking around looking and like, so I touched one thing. I was like, this is kind of cute. And so I just kept walking around the store. And as you get ready to leave out, he's at the door. Cause I'm looking for him thinking like, oh shit, he got lost. Or did he leave me? Or which one was it? And he's at the door and he has a bag of one of the last things I had touched that I said I liked. And I was like, and yet you bought something else that I didn't ask for. And it was like, he, the more, every time we go out, he was trying to force me like to buy things. It was like, and we would go for a walk somewhere and like, it would be like a stand or something. Did you want something? Get something, go ahead, get something. I was just like, I don't need anything. I don't want anything. Like, and it was like, is this what you were taught? That this is your love language. Like you have to buy people. Like you have to show, like you can have whatever I'm going to pay for you. I said, cause you're going to attract the wrong people like this. I said, and then you're going to look up and they're going to take everything that you have and have no care for you at all. You know? And it was just like, I, I think he just didn't, you know, I, I think he wasn't taught, you know, properly as far as like, you know, that you don't have to buy a person's affection. Their affection comes for free. You know, if you want to then, you know, give to them because of that after the fact, but you can't buy, you know, them. Yeah, yeah. And it's something that I said in other interviews as well. It's just like Asian men are kind of, um, not all, but a lot of them are kind of just kind of socially retarded. That makes it any sense. And they are, you know, here's the thing too. Like, I'm, again, I'm, I'm Asian, so I'm not hating on my own people or whatever. But I am hating on that, right? Like I feel like that's a mm-hmm. problem. I feel like more more Asians need to coach their parent kids. You know what I mean? How to talk to women? You know what I mean? Because clearly the women don't have a problem approaching men. The women, Asian women, are very popular. 
You know what I mean? Everybody wants to date an Asian woman. When it comes to Asian men, we're either socially awkward or really there's not too many people that are, you know, aware of us or really interested, right? And and you guys have a low self some, not all, have like a low self-esteem about themselves. Like it was the one guy and I was just like, I told him, I was like, oh, you're, I was like, you know what, you're really attractive, you know? And he was like, really? And it, it was almost like he, like, I, like he thought like I was just like lying or something. And it was like, he, you know, and then when he would talk about himself, he would always talk like down about himself. And I was just like, okay. Like, I was just like, look, I think that you're super attractive and you're cool. I said, and then every time I give you a compliment, you have something so super negative to say about yourself. I got to him, I was like, you really could dry somebody up. Like you really have like managed to turn me off. Like, I was like, I don't understand. Like you're, you're there, you don't need anybody to hate on you because you're hating enough on yourself, you know? And it's like, I just don't, you know, like that part, I just don't get either. You know, I don't know where they get that from or, you know, talking about themselves. It's just, it's just the weirdest thing to me. And I yeah. guess coming from my culture, because our culture, they were like, you meet someone, a male from the Caribbean, he's like the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> you can't tell him he not. <laughs> he could be homeless and a homeless man will tell you like, he's the best thing that you'll ever see. <laughs> You no, know, and I mean that's that's the thing, and I'm sure okay, personally. Okay, first of all, just full disclosure: anybody who's watching this uh, interview, because it's not live, but anybody who's watching it um, after the fact, it's very. Um, I'm gonna say something right now that'll probably piss off a lot of people, but I don't really care because it needs to be said. Um, I feel like a lot of Asian men are more come are really the type of people. Asian men, keep in mind, I keep talking about Asian men, not Asian women. Asian men are the type of person who will, in most social situations, even if they're on the losing end, will bend over, pull down their pants, and take it up the fucking ass. You understand? And here's the thing. I don't do that, okay? I'm not, like, a particularly, you know, tall person, thing like that, but I'm smart. Mm -hmm. Because I have a lot of experience that Asian, that most Asian mm -hmm. guys don't necessarily have. Right, and that's not mm -hmm. necessarily a good thing or bad thing, but I've learned a lot. I've learned how to make dating work for me. I've learned mm -hmm. how to, what works for me. And I know how to get what I want. It doesn't happen all the time, mm -hmm. but when it does, it's because I use the right approach for me. But yeah. Asian men, I'm not afraid to call people out. I'm not afraid to stand up for myself or anything like that. I don't want to get into a fight with anybody. Thankfully that hasn't happened. But if I have to- I'll Don't worry about it. If you have a Caribbean woman around you, we'll fight with you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh no, I'm sorry. But see, I'm saying like more Asian men need to be like that. They need to basically culturally appropriate or adopt other aspects from other cultures because they are they're not the weakest race of men. I'm not I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying they are okay. Like I said, literally bending over, bending over and getting fucked in the ass. Okay, that's it. That's what it is. And I would say it louder, but I'm in a freaking restaurant, so I don't get kicked out of here for saying pornographic language. You know, basically oh what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to say is, you know, if you're watching this. And you're Asian man, and you fit the description of what I'm talking about. You need a man up. You need to grow some balls, okay? Because y'all making the rest of us, like me, look bad, okay? And you can't always blame the media. Sometimes it's just yeah. self. Sometimes it's just you. You're, you're the problem, not the media. You need to stop being a pussy. You need to stop being a pussy, <laughs> okay? Stop being a pussy and man up. Even if you're not the biggest person, tallest person, whatever. Fine, I don't give a fuck. Just stand up for hey, yourself. Bruce Lee was like 5'5", five, five, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Hey, he he was... probably kick everybody's ass around here. Exactly. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. David, if you're into the Bible, David slayed Goliath, which is the giant. He's a regular person. It's size is a monster. It's about um, respect for yourself. You know, mm -hmm. you don't let people treat you any way because you don't you don't deserve that. So it's about respect for yourself. And that's another thing I've, I've heard from Asian men. Like, they like that women of color are very protective which is just our culture we are our nature is very protective of who we're with we're very passionate um but um we also you know it it's it's a it's a thin line you know like i don't want to have to feel like i'm taking up my little brother you know every day at school like what, mm -hmm. what do they say what the bully say five i'll be there you know what i mean i don't want to feel like that i don't want to feel like i got to go up to your job and cut somebody out because you can't speak for yourself and they're treating you like dirt you know, I do want you to be able to, one thing that Black women love is to feel um, that we're listened to, that we're, um, that we're loved for more than our appearance, 
but also for that you see us, but not just our appearance, but you see inside of us that you're interested. And if you don't know us, that you're interested in learning and like genuinely interested in learning, not just asking, because I hope she gives me some, but like literally asking because you want to know. And then we love to feel um, secure. And that doesn't, I mean, yes, financially is always a, a good point to start, but it's that, you know, if I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm being bullied, can you help me? You know, if I'm having a bad day, can I talk to you and you be able to show some type of affection, empathy, understanding, even get mad with me or, you know, anything like, you know, can you, when I, when I can't, you know, push this mountain, will you be on the other side helping me, you know, or are you going to just watch and be like, well, it's okay. We don't need to, we don't need to move the mountain. We'll just go around it. Like, you know, sometimes you have to go through things to become stronger. And it's that kind of thing that black women love. And it's not in every person or every culture because not everybody also learned how to do it either. But um, it's, you know, I think, I think the reason is you see a lot of um, recently black women with a lot of Asian guys are, are starting to, or that, you know, no one ever noticed is um, because as far as like, I think family wise, we have kind of like the same, especially like when you're in the Caribbean, you know, your family's tight knit, you know, um, there are high expectations, you know, you, there's no break about anything, you know, you, you never to look bad because you make me look bad if you look bad type thing. And um, we kind of have the similarities as a, like a, of a strict upbringing. Um, but then women are, uh, black women are very big nurturers and protectors. And then Asian men I've, that I've dated are very, uh, they, re they reciprocate that. Like they, they love that. They, they love like affection. Like I've, like every, every Asian guy I've dated has, you know, wanted to hold my hand, wanted to cuddle. And the, the, the thing I love the most, I don't know if anyone else, is that like they still have chivalry about it. Like pull my chair out, you know, push my chair in, open the doors, you know, like that's so cute to me that you kept something that, I think every gentleman or every man should have. And a lot of Asian men have those little things and, you know, they don't mind doing what some men may call like housework or women's work. Like, you know, they'll, they're like, okay, we're gonna clean the house. Okay, let's, you know, let's do it together. You know, or, oh, we're gonna wash there. You know, they're not, they're not like designating it as you just do it. You know, they're more of a team player, at least the ones I've dealt with, but they are, they do have those, you know, little unfortunately hiccups where like, you know, they're, 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 I understand being passive, but sometimes you just become a doormat. You know, I understand that you want to be peaceful, but then also you don't express yourself so that no one knows. You know, if I upset you and you don't open your mouth to say something, I can't correct myself and we can't learn from it. So now I'm just going to keep pushing you away till eventually you just turn away from me. And, and then I'm left wondering why and what's the matter. And you have never, you know, you never expressed yourself to me. And so I think that those are like the things that are um, in confidence. I mean, like you, of course, you're not it. But I mean, I've been with one guy, we were talking about another guy. He's like, he's very handsome. And someone made a comment about something and he was just like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very small. And I was like, well, who admits to that if you are? Who the hell's gonna say that? I was like, if I'm a male, I'm gonna tell y'all I'm, I'm big as an elephant. Even if, my, even if it's the size of my pinky finger, you're not gonna get me to admit to that ever. But it was just so casually, and I was just like, who says that? Why would you say that about yourself? And it was just like, immediately he just started like, he's like, well, I'm very small and I can't, I would never be able to compete with anybody he's talking to. And I'm just like, what the fuck? What kind of, you know, and it was just the weirdest, <laughs> it was the weirdest stuff, but I've met more Asian guys that do like, it, and it was another, it was, um, and we were looking, it was one of my friends and we had video taught it and he's, he's Korean. And so we were like laughing and joking or whatever. And the other girls were like, oh, he's so cute, blah, blah, blah. And so after we got off, he was like, and so she's like, show him a picture of what he looked like. So I showed him another picture. And I was like, he's really cool. He's nice, you know? And I'm like, you know, pumping him up, everybody. And then he comes by and he sees that what we're talking about. He's like, what are you guys talking about? So we show him. He's like, oh yeah, he's very handsome. He's nice looking or whatever. I said, well, you are too. You know, but he was like, yeah, but I'm small and something. And I was just like, oh, okay. <sighs> But you just shot yourself in the foot. I don't even know how this works. <laughs> I, yeah. like, I really don't. I don't know what to do from here. I'm, I'm lost now. 
Yeah, I've 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 been through enough experiences to know that um there are certain things you should not ever say out loud. Uh, I've I've right. never said that, <laughs> but there are certain things that like you can turn a woman off from, and there's certain mm -hmm. certain mindsets that turn women off, and uh, mm -hmm. saying that you are small down there, uh, especially for an Asian guy. You just shut the fuck up like what are you doing it was just i i wish i wish i wish you could have been there because as you see my original reaction i was just like i don't even know what how am i supposed to i don't even know how to save you like you just threw that out there and like the other asian girl they're laughing you know and they're they're certainly talking and i'm just like i i don't even understand i don't, I don't know what to do for you like and i'm gonna tell i'm gonna give everybody a tidbit a little a little secret about women it doesn't, okay. First anatomy wise, the point to please a woman is only four inches in and up. If you add four and a half, then you winning already, okay? Two, it is endurance. Slower wins the race, <laughs> okay? And then the last one, if all else fails, what you have to do is learn how to make love to a woman's mind first. And the body will follow. So it doesn't matter what you are. If she's in love with you mentally, you, it, 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 nothing else matters. Nothing else matters that you do. It's called, it's called, like my dad say, I used to mind fuck women. And I said, mm -hmm. mind fuck them. He's like, that's why I get them to do whatever I want. I said, what does that mean? He's like, I'll tell you when you get older. So that, you, you get her mentally, and nothing else matters. us. That's why, that's why you see women that stick with somebody for forever and a day. And you're like, why are you dealing with this person? Because he's, he's mentally got a hold of her. And he's, and he's gotten, that part is so pleasing and infatuated that she's willing to overlook anything. And women are also understanding, contrary to what you think. But don't start at the gate, saying the wrong <laughs> Don't start at the gate with the wrong stuff. Get to know that person, listen, be the ear, be the shoulder, be um, everything that she needs and everything that she didn't know she needed. And all of that physical stuff won't matter. That's why you see fat people with like a skinny person, an ugly person, when you be like, how, did, how the hell did you get that? Like, she too pretty for you. That's mm -hmm. because he knew what to do everything else and it made her made her lose her vision like Ray Charles. She no longer saw the ugly. She she just saw everything else, you know. So that's way that's how that works. So man, I gave you something. Don't say I never give you nothing. No, not for sure. Uh, I'm sure a lot of guys. So uh, hopefully they they watch this. Write like, it down. Um, <laughs> No, because like a lot of mostly like you know a lot of a lot of women are you know they're like sixty seven percent of my audience on this channel, and the rest are like I guess guys or whatever probably. But um, yeah, no, that's really good advice. That's really <laughs> good advice. So um, one last thing, and I'll let you go. Uh, so I want to go back to sort of circle around to the first topic we were talking about, which is like where yeah. you're from, and I just want to know like, not that I plan on using any of these words, but I mean, you never know. I might be drunk or whatever. I might be in a bar. There might be like a cute girl from the Caribbean there. I might, I might do something stupid. I might act a fool, but you know, whatever. It's worked before. But I was just wondering, like, what are some like? Can you explain like some typical like Caribbean phrases? And when I mean that, I mean a lot of the phrases that a lot of non-Caribbean people use, right? Like a lot of like. Here's the thing, right? I'm not familiar with this guy, but like, okay, I'll just ask you. Do you know who Tom Hanks' son, Chet Hanks? Are you familiar with that guy? white guy uh i mean i know of him but not not totally he's like, like i know i know of him but not he's like a professional uh cultural appropriator of uh, black culture um oh, <laughs> basically <laughs> basically he's 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 he hasn't gotten in trouble or anything like that but he he he's yeah i guess he's the ultimate cultural appropriator. but he will basically like i said he's he's, ca he's caucasian he's not from the caribbean at all but like he mm -hmm. will mouth off and say all these caribbean phrases and stuff like that and I just want to know, can you go through a couple and explain like which ones, like what means what, like terminology, all that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Well, it, it, it actually depends because I don't know who he's appropriate because like I said, we're all absolutely like, right. like when you're um, like, um, like, like, um, like when you're 
when you're in Jamaica, like what go on is like, hey, or how you're doing or hello. Like that's the first thing you see someone like everyone is brethren. That means that, that you're close, you know, um, like, yeah, Wagwan. Wagwan. Um, we say uh, like, uh, like, you know, if they say where she's at, she's, you know, she's in a yard. Yard is my home. Like it's, um, it's, I mean, it just depends on like, you know, um, uh, like there's not, it depends. Cause like, you know, you, you can go to Haiti, you can go to the Republic, you can go to everyone. And then everything is like different as far as, so I don't know who he's a culture appropriating to be able to translate. You'd have to tell me something he says. Well, and I can then pull- I can tell you like, well, yeah, I can tell you then, like, if it's me or if I understand it or, you know, no, but people go to the islands and, um, like, I mean, like, they go to the island, they go to, like, the resorts, they go, you know, let's say, let's say Jamaica, you, they want to go and they go and smoke weed and all that stuff. They, they, they go and they speak with people and they listen and they pick up words. They probably listen to DJ Khaled when he just did the, the song with, um, Capitan and Bougie Bantan and all of them. He probably he probably picked the birds from there too. Um, but I you know I probably would have to <laughs> I don't know if I want to hear it, but I probably would definitely have to hear it to see. You know, but yeah. it's not like um I can't like I mean I could give you phrases, but it's not the same as when if we're talking naturally, like and it, it's it's um our culture is facial expressions. Um, we 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 kiss our teeth a lot. Um, if you know what that means. No, I don't know what it means. What does it mean? <laughs> it's a no- <laughs> it's a noise that we make. Can you do it? It's it like <laughs> now it's like on the spot. All right, so like um, say if you you tell me something I don't believe you, I'll just be like oh, it's okay, this noise. Okay. And, it's, and we and it, it'll be in mid conversation, you know, and you'll be like, I want to, you know, or she did this, and it's it, it'll come out, and it's just a natural, you know, it, it emphasize it can emphasize anything that you say, you know, it's like it, it's it, it's and if you don't want to speak, it speaks volume, mm-hmm. you know, like you know, like at that point, somebody's doing that, you, you they they think you're full of shit, you know what I mean? At this point, but I won't say anything, but you'll just hear me do it, um, and it's called kiss me teeth. Like, and that's just what you're doing. You put your lips to your, your teeth and you make the noise. Um, but it's just, you know, like um, we're expressive, we're in the moment, we're more um, we're active with actually without full words. You know, like you could do something and I'll be like, just like that. And then that's just, and I'm just gonna look just like that, but you know exactly what I mean. And you'll go into a conversation to, you know, to, to answer my question, but it's more of a, um, that's why I say like, it's more like in the moment, like if we ever have like a regular full conversation and I just start talking to you, at first you'll be absolutely probably lost. You'll pick up some things. And then after a while you'll be like, I know what this means. Like now reggae means more clear to me. You know, <laughs> that's what my friend said. We started talking and he was like, just start talking to me like you would talk to someone at home. So I was like, okay. So we start talking on a regular. And after all he said, I understand reggae music better. I was like, really? <laughs> it was like funny, but it's just that, um, like, you know, people wear out a lot of phrases, um, just like in, in, the, in the American culture. So I can't tell you who or where he got it from or where he went, but we say so many different things that, um, you know, there's no telling at this point. Like I could, I could run off a list of things, but I don't know what he's really saying. Um, or actually where he, where he got it from either. So like Rihanna, Rihanna has a song, right? And it's called, um, mm-hmm. uh, what is the song called? It's a really old song. Uh, fuck, what's the name of it? Oh God. Uh, it's, it is, it's an expression I've heard a lot before. Um, Rude Boy. How old is Rude it? Boy. Oh. Is that, what does that mean? Rude boy is like a bad boy. Oh, okay. Because mm-hmm. I've heard, I've heard, I've heard that like said in other movies and TV yeah. shows. I'm like, people can say that. What does that mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. Rude boy. It's like it's like it's like a it's like a it's like a bad boy. 
Yeah, we don't have any any sexy stuff like that in Asian <laughs> culture. That's why a lot of people hate on us because yeah. we're like boring. <laughs> it's the most boring culture. You know, the and, some, and the bad part is you guys will own it. You guys will be like, like I'll have a conversation with someone, you know, and he'll be just asking me like, like like, like, like how we're doing this interview. He'll just be talking, like asking me a lot of questions. And he'd be like, well, I'm sorry if I feel like that, you know, I'm asking a lot. I was like, well, what do you want to know? He's like, I know, because I'm boring and I don't have anything to say. And you're so interesting. And I'm like, well, that's great that you just throw yourself down. You know, but that, that's something that you guys will say too. Like, we're boring. And I'm like, not really. Like, your culture, like, I, I've, I've been to the country several times. Um, I learned a lot about the dynasties and stuff like that. I was like, it's interesting. I was like, you know, maybe you don't find it interesting, you know, as like, you know, we find our culture interesting or we find our, um, even even American culture, you know, when you, when you go back to different people and just learn about them and what they went through to that time and there. So to me, it's interesting, you know, and maybe you guys don't find it like that, but I mean, that's like a, like a pivotal like point in you, you know, like, hey, let me tell you about, you know, the Ming dynasty, or let me tell you about this, or, you know, some things that are great that you know you can actually draw people into you to want to learn more about your culture and then possibly like go there to see it and that's a great thing about you guys too you guys have a lot of your 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 historical stuff still there you know so you can still go see these things you know um you can go see the monks and stuff like that. you can see like all the stuff like all the, sh- the crap that you see on tv that, that you're like this is pretty cool you actually can go to some of that stuff that's still there mm-hmm. Like that's like the cool part, you know. You mm-hmm. you didn't lose your, your history; it's still there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it sort of leads to another point, which I won't get into because I talk forever about that. But like how you see a lot of Asian <laughs> guys, uh, and and I guess Asian women like Aquafina, for example. Um, but you know, like a lot of Asian guys, more so like appropriating, you know, like like other cultures, like black culture, white culture, mm-hmm. because um, you know, they might be they might be ashamed of their own culture they might think oh you know asian guys are boring or they're not interesting so let me try to act differently let me try to act more white let me try to act more black i mean i've done it not like to extremes but i've done it you know what i mean and it has worked i have gotten you know gotten laid because of it i'm not gonna lie but um no whatever works (laughs) whatever works right Whatever, but, um, whatever got you there, whatever got you there. Okay. Yeah, no, but that that was that was then. That was a long time ago. So, but no, basically, um, I agree. Well, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna end this interview because we've been going on for a while. I don't want to keep it on forever, but um, I do appreciate you know for us you know finally getting to sit down and talk, you know, and have this interview. I really do appreciate it. Um, Absolutely. And I feel like there's a thing too. So okay, so I'm gonna twist it. I'm not trying to ask you out or anything like that. But are you currently uh talking or seeing anyone? Not anyone seriously. Like I would love okay. to find someone that is like serious, but mm-hmm. I think like like some of the things that I named about the age of culture is what holds these people back. And I'm just like, okay, I can only hold your hand and take you so far. If you can't meet halfway, I don't know what to do for you. Let's see. Okay, so here's the thing. So I want to end this on here. So guys watching, hopefully there are guys, not just women. Uh, she just basically <laughs> she didn't say it, but she basically said that she's single. So. She's, absolutely i'm gonna say it absolutely she, yeah she's, she's single so if you want to shoot your shot you know if, if people want to shoot their shot where can they find you you have social media instagram facebook anything like that i am horrible at all of that stuff um look i'm gonna have you be my liaison i'm joking uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> my first one match okay? you have to weed them out okay no um i mean i guess I guess like I guess they can find me like on I wouldn't even say on the Facebook because I get so many random unsolicited dick videos I I could I can't I I wouldn't even they would message me and I probably wouldn't see it for months because I I have gotten so to the point of ignoring them that I'm like I'll check like after a few weeks and see what happens um I don't even know like that's that's the worst part um, so I don't have Instagram. I don't have Twitter. Um, I think like, the most thing I ever have is like WhatsApp and that's like mainly for work. Um, and then the Facebook thing. Mm. So, and then my, the funny part, my brother created that for me. So, so I could be in his Facebook? chat groups. Oh, okay. He created my Facebook so I could be in his chat group. He has a back chat group. 
well, and one day it just popped up about joining the group and I just like ah I'll click on the group and see and that's how I got in there <laughs> so I, I guess I'll put it in a different way so I know that you are in a lot of the Facebook groups so if uh <laughs> So guys, if you want to, you know, shoot your shot or whatever, she, she's constantly posting in the, in the Facebook group. So but I see it all the time. Why do you say it like that? <laughs> no, not, not like that. It's not a bad thing. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to, you know, redirect, you know, the male traffic to you. Well, male traffic. Uh, yeah, Asian guys basically to you. Here's the thing, right? Asian guys. Uh, it's what, is, what, what is my Facebook comes up under? It's, it's just Desdemona. Des, Desmona. Yeah, Desmona Fontia. Desdemona, um, just like the Greek um, tragedy. Mm -hmm. So it's D E S D E M O N A and Fontia, F O T I A. Yeah, and I can also include you know the link to your to your page in the description if you want. Cool. If you're okay with it. Cool. Um, That's fine. But, but all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this interview. Um, I'm, I'm glad that this is fun. I'm glad that, you know, I get to yeah. learn a lot more it about the Caribbean. Um, and Anything. yeah, yeah, like I said, you're always welcome to come back. I know you're a very busy person, but, you know, if you ever want to come back or whatever, sometimes we do group panels too with other people. So, mm. so that'd be really fun. Um, Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, everyone watching at home right now, if you made it to the end of this video, thank you very much. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can get notified of whenever I upload something new like this one. Um, like I said, this has been a really good interview. So, Everyone, I will see y'all on the next chat. And Desmona, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I will send you the link. Ciao.